All right, guys, we got something special for you today. Uh, we're gonna go shallow water fishing. I, I mean, this is pretty much uh, how I've made my living the last uh, 20 years or so, is just fishing shallow. Uh, it's kind of crazy at all, you know, I grew up fishing shallow constantly, fishing John boat tournaments and stuff. And, uh, you know, when I got into the big tournaments, the whole side scan thing and all that stuff, I got all the electronics on. Uh, I did horrible, finished like dead last a couple events. And uh, from that time on, I kind of, you know, learned that, you know, I'm just gonna go shallow every time. Uh, and try to make it work. And of course, we're gonna have a few bad tournaments, but you know, if we get dialed in on that shallow water game, uh, you know, maybe we can be successful more than not. And uh, sometimes you gotta cut your own path. And that's why I run an aluminum crest liner, uh, cause I can pretty much go wherever I want in it. Let's go see if we can't get back there. All right, guys, man, we made it as far as we possibly could. You know, we put the Atlas jack plate all the way up, trimmed the mercury down, pushed it away, and now we're just completely bottomed out. Uh, now we're gonna move up front and uh, try to slide the old Plano box uh, under the trolling motor, see if we can't get in. All we got is another maybe 20 feet to go. All right, guys, we made it in. God, I'm sweating to death. Uh, that, that was crazy. That took like over an hour to get in here. Um, but that's kind of what you look for when you're fishing shallow. Sometimes it might take a long time to get in. Uh, when you get in, the fishing's really good. And, um, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, you know, even in a tournament, uh, you know, there's not gonna be any other bass boats more than likely coming through there. I know no fiberglass boats can make it through there. So when you find these areas like this, we, you know, I mean, we have this giant pond here, or lake that we got to. It's got a you know, it's probably, it's average depth's probably two, three feet of water. Um, the fish aren't able to leave because it's pretty much dry land coming in. And, uh, and this is a perfect scenario. You know, you come in for your tournament and uh, you know, you would catch all your fish in a short amount of time because they haven't seen many baits, you know. They're uh, very unpressured. Got them! <laughs> oh, that was, that was so sick. Oh, I lost my worm. <laughs> First cast with the Berkeley Speed Boss. Oh my gosh! I I I, I don't know. That might have been that might have just jinxed us, jinxed the sketch of one on the first cast. But let's see. Let's let this guy go and see if we can get another one. Um, you know, when I, when I come into some of these areas, not knowing anything about it, and it's a pretty big area, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my two most favorite baits that I like to throw to cover a lot of water. And that's the swim jig and uh, the Berkeley Speed Boss. And I mean, it, and that's my whole mindset is I'm gonna try to fish this pond as quick as I can and find those key areas uh, where the fish are concentrated. And then I'll slow down and I'll, you know, pick up my flipping rod or something. There we go. Oh gosh. There's a lot of life in here. <laughs> They're all the same size as the worm so far. And that happens, you know, sometimes you come back into these places and, uh, you know, either got too hot or dried up or something could have happened and, you know, and they might all be, you know, the same size. But I don't know, this place has got a lot of water and I think we're going to get a big one here. You know, one reason I really love this worm is how versatile it is. I mean, it, you know, I, I think it was made, you know, I think Skeet designed it to reel under the surface. Uh, you know, Tex Frig with a weight. Um, but boy, it sure works good on the, on top of the surface. So it's it's a bait you can really cover, you know, the entire water, water column with. Look at that alligator right there. I don't think anybody's been back here. I think he's not even scared of us. Uh, now, nah, you stay over there. Stay over there. Nope, there we go. Oh man, they're all the same size. Oh man, that's still fun though. <laughs> man. That is the reason why you need a good pair of polarized glasses. Uh, I mean, three of those four last bites, uh, you know, I was able to actually see them coming 
uh, and I, you know, stopped the speed boss and they ended up picking it up. You know, we probably wouldn't have caught those fish if we would have kept reeling. Uh, I prefer the, the loophole sunglasses. Uh, you know, they've had crystal clear scopes forever. Uh, and now they came out with, you know, a shatterproof sunglass lens. Uh, it really helps me see the fish really well. And uh, it just gives you that feel. I'm a, I used to always love plastic lens. I wasn't a fan of glass because it was so heavy. Uh, now you have the feel of a plastic lens, nice and lightweight, uh, but durability, you know, beyond even a glass lens. And uh, man, they're by far my favorite ever. And let's get us another one. Here we go. Oh gosh, he's in the nasty stuff. Oh, 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 not much bigger. Oh man, that was cool. He choked it on top there. Yeah, let's see if we can get another one. Oh, oh. he's got it. Oh my God. Oh God, I don't, I still don't understand how does a fish that big eat a worm that big? Oh, here we go. There we go. They're getting bigger. Boy, there we go. Picked up the swim jig. <laughs> Boy, you had a big old head on this guy. That was so cool. I just I just made the change from the Speed Boss to the swim jig and saw some wakes and got that guy there. So, you know, when you get in a lot of these shallow water areas, something I always have to do is, is kind of go into stealth mode. You know, I, you know, a lot of times I don't even put the transducers on uh, or they get ripped off right away, but uh, the whole thing is turning them off, uh, making it as quiet. You know, you're, you're only in a foot and a half, two feet of water a lot of the times, and, you, and you're wanting to be able to sneak up on the fish. And that's another reason too why I uh, love running this aluminum boat because it, it, it drafts so less water. You push this pressure wake in front of the boat and the fish will actually, uh, you know, spook before you get to them. So, you know, with this crest liner is so wide uh, that it just doesn't, it doesn't have that, it doesn't push that wake, that pressure wake in front of the boat because, uh, you know, when you're trolling fast, it just barely any of the boats in the water to begin with. So it, it you know, just allows you to sneak up on them. And, uh, you know, and I, I don't know how many times in, in the tournaments, you know, I've caught fish right at the boat. Um, and, and I think that's a, a main reason is because they just, they never feel that pressure wake coming off the front of the boat. I mean, there's times where you'll go hours and hours with no bites. And, uh, and you'll be, she's just like, oh gosh, there's no fish here. And uh, you know, the, the one main thing that I, can, that I can tell you to help you build that confidence is, is take off all your, your depth binders and uh, not your graphs, you need your graphs for, for marking stuff, but just turn off your, your sonar, you know, and, uh, and, and, or just take it off the boat. I mean, that's what I had to do because uh, if I have it on there and I'm not getting bit right away shallow, I really tend to uh, start using it, start idling, start looking for deeper fish. Um, but when you don't have that option, uh, you know, to go out there and look for them, it really gets you uh, to grind all day shallow. And, and uh, I feel like that's what's really got my confidence up over the last few years is, is not having any uh, transducer back there and just, you know, grinding day after day. Got one. Oh man, there we go. Getting a little better. Found just a little bit deeper water here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Man, that was crazy. The water, I mean, it honestly, I mean, maybe two inches. You know, maybe two inches deeper. And it's crazy how much difference two inches will make. Well, you know, it, it's it's really hard uh, in a lot of this shallow water, especially when it's when it's all um, a matter of inches to you know a good spot from a bad spot. And just like earlier, we were in that area, 
Uh, it was super shallow, wasn't seeing any life. And, uh, you know, I wanted to just start the big engine up and jump on plane and start running and looking. Uh, but because the depth change was so small from where the fish are, uh, sometimes it's better to just get on the trolling motor, you know, and it's hard to do. It's probably one of the hardest things that I struggle with uh, is just putting the trolling motor on high and just going and going. Uh, and in tournaments, some of the best places I found, you know, I would have never found because, you know, I, I would have cranked up the big motor and kept moving, but I kept the trolling motor down and, uh, you know, found little areas like this little hole way back in here where the fish are, you know, you would normally just bypass it. Got him. Oh. Man, that was, that was like picture perfect there. You know, that's the kind of stuff, uh, you know, that you're looking for. You know, now that we found that little bit deeper water, we're seeing a lot of life. And uh, that's the kind of key stuff, you know, you're looking for points. Uh, you know, normally like you're fishing anywhere, you're looking for the high percentage areas, points, pockets, holes, you know, really depending on if the water's falling, if the water's falling, it pulls them out to the points. If it's coming up, they're gonna be more in the pockets. Um, but what makes a key piece of structure like that better uh, is, is the water. Like, so here we got, you know, it's only, uh, I mean, honestly guys, it's probably, <laughs> we might have 10 inches of water right there and we come right over here to this weed edge and what makes that point better is just it's just it kind of falls off it's either uh, old boat lane running through here or or maybe uh you know from wherever this this fills with water like the old kind of creek channel that runs through here and that running by that cover makes that you know this point better than any of the other reed points uh you know that we hit that's why it's you know that's why it was holding the fish there but the same thing goes for like the hydrilla, you know, up in here where the hydrilla is and the clumps and stuff, you know, uh, anytime you, you know, you're looking for, you know, what bush is the best, you know, what clump of hydrilla is the best. You know, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason why that one's better, it just holds fish. But a lot of times when you get up there, it's normally that bush, there's some kind of uh, deeper water in it or, you know, even if it's not, uh, you know, not visible, you know, when you flip into that bush or that clump of hydrilla, it's just gonna, you know, your bait's, oh gosh. Oh, he took my worm. I think that was a giant gar. But your bait's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna sink in a little more. And that's, that kind of goes, you know, not having transducers. Uh, that's what I do a lot of times is, is I, I fish, I feel the area out fishing. Like I might not be able to look at a depth finder and be like, it's five feet deeper here or, or uh, you know, and I'm not like looking down reading it, I'm actually visually looking, feeling it flipping, you know, flipping into the reed, seeing if it's deeper or the mats and kinda uh, feeling the spot out for the depth, you know? And the number one thing to test the water, besides my eyes, as I do the old rod check, stick it in, oh, right there, you know, it's, it's five, <laughs> five guides in, you know, there's enough water to hold some fish. You know, uh, when I'm throwing this Speed Boss, uh, what's really nice about this worm is that it's, it's weedless. And, uh, you know, not only you can put a weight on it and fish it, you know, down in the water column on the bottom, you, know, you can almost just reel it around like a swim bait, but you can actually throw it over these mats and stuff, kind of where you would throw a frog and stuff. So it just, the reason I really like it is, it's because I can keep one rod in my hand when I'm searching, trying to find these fish. You know, and then once I kind of locate them, uh, you know, then I'll maybe swap up to something and fish a little bit slower. But, uh, you know, just pretty much just running down, hitting holes and pockets and points. Um, you know, got the troll motor turned up pretty good. And, um, you know, I'm looking for any kind of activity. Uh, you know, uh, bait taking off, wakes, um, just any kind of movement. And as soon as I see any kind of movement coming towards my bait, uh, I usually try to stop it and just let it sink. And uh, sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. Uh, you know, sometimes you can throw in, you know, I like to follow it up sometimes with like a wacky hit worm or a wacky general. And, um, and yeah, it's just a really uh, good bait to cover water. Uh, th then, you know, there's like three different sizes. I prefer this big one just because we're in such shallow water, we're having to make super long casts. But, you know, there are some other applications for the smaller ones. I got them, I got them. Gosh, that was so shallow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was crazy. There's no water there. 
Maybe it was one of those little holes we were talking about where it looks like there's no water. Hey, man, it looks like it. There looks like there's a bunch of little blow holes there. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was so crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that one there. Oh my gosh, that guy's, he's, he's like almost yellow. Look at that, he's been, he's, been, he's really tan from being in the sun in that shallow water. Oh my gosh, here comes the rain. That was crazy. That was exactly what we were talking about. How, you know, it's hard to see these areas where any change is. And right there, we, that fish blew up and we saw it. And, and to myself, I'm saying, there's no water there. How's that a bass? <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> there was one in there. Oh, it's crazy. Well, you know, another important thing when you're out here, you know, going back into these ponds and stuff is make sure you have a really good rain suit because you don't know when you're gonna get out of here. And uh, man, I'd like to store mine in that Plano XL uh, storage bag. It's pretty nice. It's got, what's cool is this new zipper they put on them. And uh, man, that thing, that little T-handle, that is sm super smooth and keeps everything completely dry and water waterproof before you go ahead and and you just start getting soaked. You know, when you're spending so much money on a rain suit, um, by far that Stow All XL is the best thing to store them in. I, I ruined multiple suits this year before I got, had that thing, just throwing them into compartments and uh, you know going to close the lid and closing it down on the zippers of the rain suits and smashing them and busting them off, you know, completely ruining a thousand dollar rain suit. So that uh, Plano Stowall, it, it, uh, it's new and improved with that T-handle. Um, definitely by far the best way to store any of your soft plastics or rain suits. Gosh, oh my gosh, got overexcited on that one. Man, now that's the importance of having a rod that has some backbone, but not too much backbone, because otherwise that would have ripped a giant hole in that guy's mouth. So, you know, when I'm, when I'm throwing uh, the Speed Boss, you know, on top and stuff, it's, it's really hard, to, like I used to think you could just uh, put it on any rod because a lot of the bites you're visually seeing, um, but I've learned over time uh, that if you have a more sensitive rod, uh, you're able to actually feel uh, when the tails, like when it gets uh, clogged up with grass or whatever, and you know you need to give it a little extra pop or something uh, to clear it of the grass. And uh, that's why I prefer this 7.2 Heavy Xenon rod. It's super sensitive, uh, and it, it, man, I'm telling you, it's the lightest rod I've ever had. And uh, man, it just it handles them well, it casts far, and uh, you just don't get tired throwing it. So when it comes to line, you know, I, I'm wanting a 40, uh, to 50 pound braid. You don't want to go too heavy because a lot of times you are letting it sink in these holes. And uh, you know, I just, I feel it just looks funny when you have like rope attached to it. So a 40 to 50 pound braid. Uh, I like the Dura braid 40. That's, that's what I prefer to throw it on. Um, and for reel, you, you want, you want like a heavier due to your reel. You don't, you don't want a, you know, a super light reel. You want something that's going to hold up to dragging them out of the grass and everything. And uh, you know, in, in just a, a decently high speed, you know, like a eight three to one or so. Uh, I prefer the Xeon X uh, because uh, it's just it's super durable and uh, man, it just it holds up ripping them out of all this trash and stuff. Uh, I like this Berkley Fusion 19 swim bait hook. Um, you know, I think it's for mostly throwing big, you know, big soft swim baits and stuff, but uh, it works really great on this worm. And uh, you know, a really neat thing about this worm. Um, that's different from a lot of other baits that you throw, uh, you know, plastic wise, you know, besides like kicking baits and stuff, is this thing, it has an actual vibration that, that you can feel coming through the rod. And uh, man, it just, it really calls fish in from far away. And uh, the way I like to hook this thing, there's a lot of different ways. Um, I like to hook it with the tail, the, with the tail flat like that, where it's gonna run across the water like that. Uh, you can hook it in the side and reel it like that, so it actually looks like a tail. There, uh, there's a lot of different ways, I think, that this bait, uh, that you're able to rig it. Those are the two that I've, I've figured out so far uh, with it. But, um, and then I'm just gonna, and it's pretty neat. It's got these little lines to line up, you know, your hook so that you know exactly how to rig it and you, so you get it perfectly straight. 
So, you know, uh, fish and shallow all year round, uh, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios you have to look for. You know, they're not always in the same areas and it kind of really changes uh, throughout the season. Uh, you know, starting off in the beginning of the season, you know, your, your early spring, you know, before any spawning starts to happen, you know, your shallow water is normally going to be, uh, you know, areas that are going to warm up quicker. You're, you know, you're looking at small ponds, canals, uh, you know, just really shallow flats, uh, somewhere where that water is going to warm up a lot quicker and those fish are going to move to the bank to spawn. You know, it also, you know, more in the summertime, at least for me, it always feels like, uh, you know, the areas become a lot smaller. Um, you know, you get these feeding areas where the fish are only going to come up out of uh, whatever deep water they're in. Um, you know, and they're going to come up in the same place to feed. So, you know, you might go down a bank and catch one and then go miles and miles and not get another bite, but you'd be able to go back to that same spot, whether it's a tree, you know, uh, rocks, a sandbar, a piece of gla uh, grass, a dock, you know, depending on what it is, uh, you're able to go back and, and remake, oh shoot, remake those throws over and over. And, um, and, and you'll catch fish, you know, you'll catch one there and it might be an hour or two and then you, go, you, know, you make another stop on it and, and you might catch two or three on that stop. Um, and it just seems like those, in that summertime when it's super hot like that, it seems like their feeding areas become a lot smaller and they, they feed from the same area. No matter what time of the year it is, uh, I'm gonna always start off going quick. I'm, not, I'm never gonna start off slow just because there just can be too much dead water. And, and you know, in tournament scenarios, you know, you only have so much, you know, your couple days to find them. So I, I never start off slow with a pattern. I start off, you know, throwing, you know, something fast, covering a ton of water. And then when I do get bit, I'll kind of slow down. Um, but normally never in the tournament. I usually, you know, don't slow down until the, I mean, I never in practice slow down, but I usually slow down in the tournament. And, and when I do that, that's when I actually, you know, a lot of times practice, I don't really realize what I found because I'm always moving, you know, and covering tons of water, trying to find all these, uh, you know, places where you can get bit. Um, and then, and then once it's time, you know, to start catching, that's when you, you know, you slow down and, uh, and really start picking some of those places apart. All right, guys, so for shallow water fishing, my go-to, uh, you know, 90% of the time, is the speed boss. I really like that bait covering all the water. Uh, but when in come summertime, uh, a lot of times I'll swap it out for the cane walker when they get more on that shad, uh, you know, all the way into the fall. And I'll kind of stick with that cane walker to walk the rest or work the rest of the season out. Um, my number two here, uh, the swim jig. This thing catches them all year round. Um, really love throwing this thing. Uh, this one's the Berkeley uh, swim jig version with the max scent meaty chunk. Um, and, and I like throwing that on a 7.6 medium heavy rod, you know, an eight, and uh, around a eight three to one reel ratio, um, cause I want to be able to swim it around, pop it, catch, bring up a lot of line. For me, I mean, it's just, I can cover a ton of water with it. And uh, yeah, I really like that one. And then once I find the fish, uh, that's when I'm gonna, you know, pull out something to flip with. I'm gonna slow it down some, I mean, you know, whether there's some uh, matted structure or, you know, heavy cover. Uh, that's when I'm going to slow down. I'm going to flip, you know, the uh, creature hog there. And I throw it on a, a Pro Series uh, 711 uh, heavy rod. Uh, it, it just, it, you know, it's got really good backbone to, you know, drive the hook, but soft tip so that you don't rip the hook out. Uh, the next thing, when I got to really slow down and kind of finesse them, uh, that's when I get the old hit worm out. Uh, I Texas rig it, wacky rig it. I also do this exact same thing with the general, and I'll put it on you know, 10 uh, to, you know, 10 pound Durbraid or six pound fire line. Um, and uh, the rod I throw it on is a seven foot medium heavy uh, Pro Series. This is actually one of the ones I designed. And, uh, and what I, I wanted something that I could throw straight braid. You know, for me, I never uh, wanted to throw spinning rods. I was always wanting to have heavy braid on, bait casters and stuff. 
and uh, I, over the years I've learned I, I need to fish a spinning rod. Uh, so I finally, I, I had to make a rod that uh, it's for throwing around grass and, and heavy cover. You're gonna throw a little bit heavier braid. Um, most of the time you're gonna straight braid it and uh, it just has really good backbone and, a, and a, you know, not a quite a soft tip, but the whole rod really bends. So once you get the fish on, uh, you're able to drag them out of the stuff. And it's a perfect rod for you guys that are first time uh, gonna go, you know, add a spinning rod to your arsenal. It's a really good one to get. And for this setup, I'm using the SX Revo spinning reel. It's a great price and great quality spinning reel. And uh, man, those are my four main setups. I mean, if you're gonna go fish shallow, um, you know, and you put those four baits and rod and reels in your hand, you're gonna catch fish, just cover a lot of water. All right, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. And uh, man, comment below, like the video. Let me know if you have any other questions or something you feel like we missed or, you know, give us your shallow water tip, you know? I'd love, I'd, I'd read them all and uh, I would love to see some of them. And um, yeah, see you guys next time.